Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Ray Hall Tech. Today, I'm working on this particular laptop here. I just replaced the thermal paste, cleaned everything up, put in 8 gigs of RAM, uh, fixed the keyboard, and a couple other things. You can see there's still some cosmetic stuff like the uh, touchpad shows a little bit of wear. But I'm making this laptop ready to sell. And over here, I have its battery, and I want to test this out. Now, I'm going to give you a close-up shot of this battery here. You can see when you're looking at it... Uh, I can't quite tell through the camera, but it looks like the positive is going to be on the right side and the negative is going to be on the left side. That's important because the focus of this video today is going to be this laptop battery analyzer. It's a cool piece of tech that I found. And please forgive the state of my workstation. It's always messy like this. I'm not sure where I got introduced to this uh, laptop battery analyzer, but I've seen it on YouTube after I was introduced and watched a few videos on it, and I thought it was very much worth mentioning on my channel. So you can see this laptop battery analyzer is on laptopu.ro, and if you hit learn more, you can see a lot more information about the charger. It actually uses USB to communicate with the laptop, and the software is updated regularly so that you can can try and figure out how your battery is doing, what its health is, whether it's rated capacities, its actual capacity, and things like that. And here you can see it's got standard battery connectors where you use these spades, and I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. But it also has these other adapters that let you plug into laptop batteries that are newer. Um, and I can show you a picture of some of those as well. Uh, but the major features in this that I like is that it'll read battery information even if the battery is stone dead uh, you can actually power it on and read the battery information because there's a chip inside the battery that controls charging and has information like its manufacturer date and all of that kind of stuff and if the battery drains till it's completely dead oftentimes it won't even charge up in a laptop so let me go ahead and close down this website real quick and I'm going to show you the software. So right here, you can see it has a prolific USB to serial port adapter. When you install the software, it also installs this USB to COM port. So let me go ahead and hit connect and connect to the battery charger. And let me draw your attention over here to the latest update. You can see this one is a December 2020 update. This software is getting updated all the time and they're adding more batteries and more models to this all the time. As I showed you, I have a Lenovo laptop. So I'm gonna select my brand first to get started. Then I'm gonna put in my part number. And on my particular battery, it's an L11 S6Y01. And I'm gonna hit find pinout. Once uh, it looks up in its database, you can see the pinout of your battery. And typically, this software lists it if the battery is facing you with the connectors towards you, kind of like this sample picture of the Dell. And also on this Lenovo battery and some HP batteries, the positive and the negative are indicated. I kind of zoomed in on that in the beginning of the video because that helps you identify which way to connect these pins. So in here you have pin number one is my positive, pin number eight is my negative. Then this X3, you may or may not see this, but my particular battery is actually missing an entire pin. The X means that there's a gap or it's missing per the legend right here. Then you have a clock pin and a data pin. And you have to connect at least these four wires for the software to work. Some batteries might have more than one ground that you have to connect. And the battery analyzer comes with three ground spades. So if you need to connect more than one, you can screw them into the little green adapter and connect more than one ground. But with a stone dead battery, uh, you have to apply an output voltage. So that will turn on the chip inside of the battery, even if your laptop couldn't power it up because of the way your laptop's designed. So I'm gonna go ahead and power on the battery first. And then I'm gonna hit start reading dynamic data to see if we have communication, which we do. And I'm also gonna read the static data. All right, I'm gonna hit stop reading for now. So one thing I noticed is that the design capacity says 3888 milliamp hours, and it's actually 4100 milliamp hours on the label. And then the design voltage is 10.8 volts, which works. 
I don't know if somebody modified this battery or if it's just always been programmed low, but on this, let me power this off for a second. You can't switch tabs when it's powered on. If I come over to this auto cycle calibrate tab, you can see that it's set up to charge the battery and discharge the battery. And what it'll do is go through three cycles, I think, and determine what your actual milliamp hour capacity of the battery is. So if it's rated at 4,100 milliamp hours and it can only charge and discharge to 3,800 milliamp hours, if the chip is supported, it'll actually write that in the chip so that your battery capacity on your laptop is actually more accurate. But let me go ahead and skip that for now and I want to hit battery status. Uh, here you can see I have four alarms. There is this battery status field and you can see in mine it's 03D0. That code uh, the manufacturers have decoded to know all of these alarms are on inside the chip in the battery. And as I said, my battery is fully discharged, it is stone dead. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And I'm going to come over to this charge tab. All right, so charging. This is uh, one reason I really like this device. As I mentioned, you can't charge a stone dead battery in some laptops. It just won't turn on the charging chip inside of the, uh, the laptop battery. So there's no communication between the laptop and the battery. This computer um, software can actually turn on the chip by just applying a low voltage. That's why on some devices, if you give them a low trickle charge, they will start working and charging properly again because you just need to get it charged up enough for that chip to be able to communicate with your charger or your device. This is what we're going to do here. The Lenovo charger uh, says that the battery charges at 3.25 amps and 20 volts. So I'm going to look right here and you can see the max charging current is 3 amps. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that so that I don't accidentally apply more voltage and amperage to this battery than I should. But let me go ahead and click start charging and it's going to actually start giving me a graph and right now you can see that uh, it's charging at 8.9 millivolts or 8.9 volts I should say 8966 millivolts but it'll start charging low and then start increasing the amperage until it gets to a point that the battery will start responding and here you can see because I read its static data from the chip it knows it's a Sanyo that is supposed to be at 38 100 milliamp hours. So it's going to try and use that information to charge the battery. This process does take a very long time. So while that's working, I'm going to go ahead and show you a picture of the connected battery. So on the, the left side of this picture, you can see the battery analyzer itself. There's the power LED and the output LED. If you have a battery connected and you're not getting the output LED, you're not actually connected to the battery analyzer and you won't be able to get any readings inside the laptop battery analyzer. The little green adapter, you can actually take the wires in and out of, so you can adapt it from the spade plugs that are on this traditional laptop battery to an adapter uh, of different types and styles of current generation laptop batteries that might plug straight into the motherboard or have a small clip. And here's a picture of that. And uh, if we go back to the original picture, you can see on this Lenovo, per the diagram that we looked up in the uh, database, the first pin is power, the fourth pin is clock, the fifth pin is data, and then the last pin is ground. Now, I've taken my battery chargers cables out multiple times, so when this comes in the mail, I don't know if green is data and yellow is clock or vice versa, but uh, make sure that you check those if you get something like this so that you have the right data and clock pins in. Uh, I work on a lot of Chromebooks for a school, and they use a uh, a small connector. Uh, again, here's this picture. They use this small connector that's outside the bag, so I switch back and forth an awful lot. Let me get this battery charged, get Windows installed on my laptop, and I'll come back and show you this battery after it's been charged for a while. I'm back here after the jump. It took about three hours to fully charge this battery from being stone dead, and I want to show you a couple more things about this software. Here on this first page, now that I'm back on it, 
uh, notice that I did not hit power on, but if I hit start reading, it'll actually read the battery data. This works now because the battery has enough charge and the chip inside the battery has enough charge from the battery itself that it can be read now without me having to specifically power it on. This power on button is only necessary for stone dead batteries. And now when I look at the battery status, you can see that the battery is initialized and discharging. All of those previous status codes about the battery being fully drained and discharged are now gone, and the battery status has changed to 00C0. When you are on this laptop battery analyzer, it is always discharging the battery because the battery analyzer is putting a load on it with the components that are inside of the analyzer. Let me go ahead and hit OK. The next thing that I wanted to show you in the software is the cells check. Uh, I just want to point out that checking the cells on this battery right now is not the best thing to do because the battery is full. And uh, notice right here there's this message that says uh, check with the state of charge between 30 and 80 percent. And right now my state of charge is full. It's going to be like 99 percent because I just stopped charging it. So. I'm going to start by reading the battery configuration and in this particular battery it says that there's three cells inside the battery. Once you've read the battery configuration you can hit check wrong cells. The analyzer will then go through and look at the cells and here you can see it says wait a few seconds. You can't quite can't quite see it. It just won't stay down in the window. When this is done, you can see that it came back with a resistance measurement of each of the cells, and it's saying that I have poor cells. This battery is still working perfectly normal, and because I'm putting this in the laptop that I'm selling, I'm going to drop the price just a little bit. Uh, that way, I can put in my advertisement that while the battery is working, it may need to be changed soon. If the cells were bad, I would actually put in my advertisement that the battery is bad, drop the price $30, and say you will need to buy a new battery on Amazon or some other carrier. That way, if there's a warranty issue with the battery, they don't have to deal with that through me. They can actually deal with it through their vendor directly, so there's no middleman, as it were. I'm going to come back over here to battery info and I'm going to plug in a different battery. This battery is from a laptop that's been sitting in a box for a long time. I actually have a future video coming up on this. I'm actually going to rebuild that laptop and make it work. But this particular battery is from an HP and it's a VI04. So when I hit find the pinout on this one, it's going to say the charging positive is one and again on this HP battery the positive and negative is marked so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in each of the pins and I typically start with the ground uh, just you know grounded things are safer in my head so whether or not that's necessary may or not be the case but it just makes me feel good data is going to be my yellow wire so let me go ahead and put that in pin 3 and then attach my clock and let me go ahead and clear everything and reread the battery, make sure I hooked it up right, and it did. So if I hit start reading data, you can see that it is now filled in everything. If I hit battery status, it's going to say it's initialized and discharging. I'm going to go ahead and stop reading the battery, battery data. Sorry. I really can talk. And I'm going to come over here to cells check. This time I'm going to read the battery configuration and it'll immediately go back up to four battery cells. This HP has four cells. If I hit check wrong cells, it's going to go ahead and measure these cells as well. This battery is only 91% full, so it's a little bit better test because um, I'm closer to that 30 to 80%, but these battery cells are all dead. This particular laptop battery is four years old and I expected it to be bad. It does charge and discharge, but again, like I said, because these cells are bad, I'm going to lower the cost that I sell the laptop for and have the person who buys it get the new battery. Uh, I'm I can send them the link on Amazon or ninjabattery.com or whatever, uh, whoever they're going to buy it from, just so they get the right battery. But I will definitely deduct cost because they have to get a battery. 
if you check out something like this battery analyzer, I don't know if anybody else makes it, but it's definitely a cool piece to have in your toolkit if you're working on laptops and things like that all the time. The reason I went to seek this out is because I work on Chromebooks and a lot of the students, the children that are using these Chromebooks, they'll say that the battery doesn't work or something's wrong with the battery, it won't charge. And this toolkit lets me actually verify the battery is good or bad before I just change batteries because they're asking me to change them. And it saved us a lot of money. It's paid for itself several times over in proving that my batteries in my Chromebooks are actually good and not bad. With that, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me that thumbs down. Tell me in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like. And if you like my content, please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you very soon.